Welcome to Finite Element Methods. Today, in this tutorial, we'll, be, we'll, we'll solve the attention diffusion equation for, a mo for models in 1D by the finite element method. An application of the advanced diffusion equation is the mass transport. A one-dimensional aquifer is modeled using a controlled laboratory experiment. The aquifer has constant area and, one, and length of one meter and contaminated fluid moving through it. A chemical contaminant is measured to have a concentration of zero at x equals zero, which is our essential boundary condition. The contaminant reacts with its surroundings with rate constant Kr as it moves through the aquifer. It is known that the chemical substance will diffuse in the medium with diffusion D and the flux of the material is known at x equals one meter. So our domain is from zero to one and the flux of the material would be the natural boundary condition in our problem. Compute the steady state distribution of chemical contaminant in the aquifer using two elements. We're gonna, we're gonna assume that the velocity, is, the, the velocity of the fluid is constant. So um, the strong form of the problem The strong form of the, pro the problem is given by this equation. Where U is the velocity of the material Theta is the concentration of dilute material. Uh, D is the diffusivity. And Kr is the reaction um, rate that accounts for the reaction between the dilute and its surroundings. So um, the weak form of this problem um, is given by this equation. Where Vx is a wave function. Uh, that's not correct. We don't have derivatives uh, on, on, the, on that term. The mm. x on the boundary terms are b at l, q at l, plus B at zero, Q at zero. So we can identify from this from the weak form, the essential boundary condition related with the primary variable, which is theta and the natural boundary condition, which is related um, with the flux of the material. All right, so we started from the strong form of the problem by integrating, by integration by parts, we arrive in the, in the weak form of the problem where you identify inside the integral, so the integrand, um, three terms, only the second and the third term share the same uh, or yeah, share the same number or balance 
the derivatives. The first term is not, um, is not symmetric, you can see it here. So this is the starting point for our final finite element analysis, the weak form of the problem. So now let's go and um, pretty much rewrite the weak form, but for one general element, okay? So this is the weak form uh, for one general element. So G is a function of um, theta x, right? And Vx. And the integral is between the boundaries of the element. So node at xi and the node at xj. The integral is pretty much what we, we what, what I wrote uh, down in the in the previous slide. So we had the first term, which is not symmetric. The second term, um, which is related with the with the with the um, uh, diffusion part of the problem. Um, is balanced because the derivatives uh, for V and theta are the first derivative or order, or order one. And the third term is also balanced. Now the boundary conditions, the flux of material at node J times the basis function or the way the, the way the function at xj plus qi dxi. Okay, so this is the weak form uh, for one general element. Now, all what we need to remember to write down this um, equation in terms of the shape functions and its derivatives is that V should be substituted or replaced by by the shape function of the element or the transpose, let's say the transpose of the shape function of the element. It means that any, de any derivative of V would be the derivative of the basis function of the shape function N. And the derivative of the basis form of the shape function n is represented by b. Saying this, the weak form um, can be written in this way. So here, theta prime, oh, sorry, theta tilde is the approximate function. And the weak form is a function, it's a, it's a, the weak form is a functional, right? So we, it's a functional of the function theta tilde and the shape function um, um, let, me, let, me, let me, what I wanted to do is to substitute. So 
in that case, let's remove the J from, from N. It's just, it's just a vector containing um, two components or three components depends on, on in the order of the, of the element. Um, okay, so just like that. So integral from xi to xj of what? So this is star. U is just a, it's, it's just a constant, right? It's just a number. So it's just U. V is a transpose. I'm gonna, for simplicity, I'm gonna, um, I'm not gonna write down the, the superscript element, okay? But this is for element. This is for one element, all right? So this is NT. What is theta prime? So theta prime would be B times D, where D is the displacements. Uh, well, it's not a displacement in this case, but it is the is related with a primary variable. What we what we try to solve for, okay? In our cases, it's related with with theta. All right, but let's keep it like that to, to follow the same convention. Now we have plus. We move to the second term. So for the second term, we have d, right? We have v prime. V prime is related with the transpose of B. And theta prime is um, B times D. Now we can move to this third term. So KR. V, which is related with the transpose of the shape function N and theta, which is the shape function N dotted uh, with D. Okay? So that's all what goes inside the integrand. Now, for the boundary conditions, the only boundary condition that we have is um, the, only, the, the only natural boundary condition that we have, it's, um, it's at the node um, um, J, but okay, this is general, so just keep it for like this for now. So just let's move uh, Q to the other side. And this Q contains the information um, of the flux of the material at node I and the flux of the material at node J. So you, you might ask, why, what happened with V evaluated at XJ and V evaluated at XI? Well, if we consider um, V evaluated at XJ at the node J, that would be one, right? And if we consider V evaluate e, v, um, X, A, XI evaluated at node I, it would be one. So that's why we're simplifying only to for uh, to Q. All right, so now that we have this, that we form in this matrix notation, uh, we can, we, we can make, um, we can rearrange some of the terms by pulling out D from the integral. Why? Because D is not a function of X. So 
we can rewrite this equation as un transpose b plus db transpose b plus kr n transpose n dx dx times d equal to q. All right? Okay, so now that we have the weak form in this in this method in this way, we need to consider that this we need to discretize the, the, the domain. So we said that this problem is solved by two elements. So my domain, let's say that is represented by it goes from zero to L would be um, solved by two elements. The first element, so element number one, is gonna be a quadratic element. And this element number two is a linear element. It's a linear element. So we'll have these two. Now, The difference between um, between the weak form for each of the elements would be in the definition of would be the definition of the of the shape functions, right? The shape function for the quadratic element would have um, would be would be three shape functions, right? And for the linear element, we'll have two shape functions, right? One for um, and the derivative of this shape function would be also either three or two, depends on what element we're we're dealing with. We're dealing with. All right. So to explain um, the procedure, I'm going to use the linear element. So let's do this for the linear element. So for the linear element, we have that theta tilde for the element is equal to theta i. So is that it's going to be the, the solution. It's going to be theta not i times the shape function the linear shape function. So we have xj minus x over the length of the element. This is ni plus theta j x minus xi over L E, and this is the shape function of no J. Or the shape function in J. Right? So theta I is the sol is, is 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 theta at I, right? But the shape function is star um, is, is is describing is, is is describing the variation or yeah, the variation along the element. All right, so this is represented by the product NE with DE. The derivative of this, which is um, theta prime E, Um, can be written as a V E D E. All 
All right, so remember that this is just a, I, a prime i and m prime j. This is what it is. Okay, so saying this, BE would be just one over LE minus one, one, right? So it means that if we have this um, operation between N transpose, B transpose, that would be one over LE, xj minus x, x minus xi, one over le, minus one, one. So the result of this is a two by two matrix. Um, and this is the matrix where the first element is minus xj minus x. The second element in the, in the same row is xj minus x. The first element in the second, in the second row is x minus xi. And the third, uh, the second element in the second row is x minus xi. So you can see from this matrix, two by two matrix, that is not symmetric, right? And if we, if you remember in this equation, I told you that this first term was not symmetric. So it's asymmetric term. And this first term is related, of course, for the first term of this equation, where this is the derivative, right? So you can see that V and theta are not valid. The derivatives, the derivatives of V and theta are not, are not balanced, right? So that's the, this is the result of this um, of this fact, all right? So that's something special about this, the solution of the adventure diffusion problem. You can see that not all the, no, the stiffness matrix uh, or, um, won't be symmetric. And we'll see that later. All right, so let's move on. So now, for the second term, we, we have that um, BE transpose B times BE. So you are very familiar with this term. We, we've seen that before um, in lecture number eight. So that's just one over LE squared one minus one, minus one, one. Symmetric, right? Okay, remember that this B, e, this B transpose B is the second term, which is symmetric. And that term is related with V prime theta prime which is actually the only term that was uh, integrated by parts to get the width form. All right, so, um, so now we have a third term to look at it. 
that term is the third one. And in the third one, you will have the case that NE transpose is multiplied, multiplied NE, and NE trans, A transpose N. So let's do it. So one over L over E, XJ minus X, X minus XI, this is N transpose. Now, this is N. That would be one over LE squared. and a square matrix two by two, where the first component is quadratic. Remember, this is this is linear element, right? And we are getting now the product, we're getting in a, a component in the stiffness matrix whose, whose terms are not linear, are quadratic. So the second term is xj minus x, x minus xi. This is symmetric. This is, this is a symmetric term because uh, the derivatives are balanced in the weak form. So the diagonal terms are the same. Mm, this is i. And this is j, right? Xj minus x times x minus xi. And the last term is x minus xi to the square. All right. So now we can go back to our expression for the weak form. A G and we can, let, let's do it this way. And we can see that what we just did are to, uh, um, what, we, what we just did is the calculation of the vectors to get the, fir the first, the components or the terms um, in the stiffness matrix of that dimension diffusion problem. So we have three products, N transpose B, B transpose B, and N transpose N. The first term, the asymmetric term, is related with a, a advention. The second term is related with the diffusion. Okay. All right. So all what is left is just to plug these matrices. If you want to expand this, just plug back these calculations and in, in this equation, and you will have um, and you will have the stiffness matrix on the on the on the left, and the force vector on the right. Again, when we refer to the stiffness matrix, to the displacement vector, to the to the force vector, it's just the analogy we have. It's just analogy to those uh, elements uh, from the structural analysis, but they are actually it's just a name to identify k, d, and q in in this system of linear equations. All right, so. So 
now we're moving to solve this system um, of equation in, in Mathematica. So I've prepared this script. I'm gonna go over um, almost each uh, and every line uh, to explain to you how to approach um, this problem. So as I said, we're solving this uh, the eventual diffusion problem uh, for mass transport uh, with two quadratic with two elements. The first element is quadratic, and the second element is a linear element. I explain um, I explain um, the, the 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 weak form in the matrix uh, matrix notation for the linear element because it's it's more it's more practical to do it that way. But the same steps. Uh, can be applied for the quadratic element. The only difference will be the size and the definition, the size of, of, the, of the vectors for the shape functions and, um, and, the, and its derivatives, uh, B, and of course, the shape function by itself. So starting for the quadratic element, you can see in the first line, you can see in the first line, um, um, it's just, I parameterize this model. And so uh, I'm just giving the coordinates for the first element. So the first element goes all the way from zero to L over two. So half of the domain will be covered by a, quadra by, by a quadratic element. The functions in i, n, j, and n, k are exactly the ones are the same you saw in the lecture. So, um, or the definitions of a, i, n, j, and k, sorry. So now we have the j functions in the next, in the next line. This is, this is the same as a, a step to define the j the, the functions given um, in the lecture. We have in the next line, the derivative of the, of the, the derivatives of the shape functions. By the way, um, so um, now we identify two, three terms in the in the in the in, in the state in the stiffness matrix in the development of the stiffness matrix for our problem. So the first term was related with the product between the transpose of the shape function vector uh, or, or the vector containing the shape functions and B, which is the derivative of the, of the shape functions. The second term, by the way, this, the, this is the asymmetric term in the stiffness matrix. The second term is related with the transpose of B that it would be, and the third term, and the third term is related with the transpose of the of the shape function dotted with the shape function. The last two terms, the second and the third one, are symmetric. So to get k1, which is the first stiff, the stiffness matrix for the first element, we just need to integrate each of the terms or the summation of the three terms, sorry, between the domain, which is from zero to L over two. Now the definition of the linear element um, or the domain for the linear element goes from where the first element, the quadratic element ends and goes all the way to L. Similar to the quadratic element, we have the definition for Ni and the definition for Nj. We have the J functions and B. I'm not gonna explain anything here because it's already given in the lecture. Um, now, same as I explained for the quadratic term, we define three terms 
inside the in, in the in the integral to get the stiffness matrix and k2 corresponds to the stiffness matrix for the second element okay so if you want to remember what you did um, at the beginning of the class with the springs is pre is, i mean is what all, all the differences like for the for, for the spring we already have the stiffness matrix for each element for each spring here we don't have it so we need to calculate it but once we calculate it when when this is calculated for each element we can just go to the lock to the global um level and assembly um the stiffness make the local stiffness matrices in the global stiffness matrix that's all what we, that's what we're doing so that's what i'm gonna do and then we're gonna solve that system of equations k times d equals q we're gonna solve it for 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 the for the for the coefficients in the shape functions which in our case in this problem are related with theta right so that's um that's that's what we're gonna do then theta is the concentration of the debut material that's our primary variable in this problem so the first equation contains the, el the, the element of the stiffness matrix uh, K1, and the element is in the position 2, 2. Right? That element is related with, it, with, it, with theta, for, with the first component of, of, of theta. So it means theta evaluated at, um, at 1. Uh, let me let me do something. Let me get back um, to to the slide, and I'm I'm gonna explain something to you um, I missed um, before, which is the assembly method, the assemble, the, the, yeah, the, the assembly process. Or so in this assembly process, we have one stiffness matrix which is K1 related with the element one. And the size of that stiffness matrix is three, by, is three by three. Why? Because we have three nodes to define the quadratic element. So the size of this matrix is three by three. And the code and, 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 the, and, the, and the code um, number is given by 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, and 2, where 0 is representing um, the component or is representing the component of the stiffness, of this, the stiffness matrix, matrix, matrix sorry, um, in, the, in the node that is not active, right? So for this stiffness matrix or for this element, we only have two active nodes. Remember that our essential boundary condition at x equals zero is zero, right? So this is this is the stiffness matrix for the first element. For the linear element, the size of the stiffness matrix is two by two. And the code numbers are two and three. So when we go to the to the global matrix, global stiffness matrix, in the assembly process, right, we will have um, K11, which corresponds to the position um, one one in 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 the in this in in K1. The second position, the same row, would be K12, which is exactly what we have. Um, is, this, is, is this element there? 
zero there. Now this is symmetric, so Q21, one, one. Um, Q22, or oh, let's say this is Q21. Now let's go to Q, uh, K22 for the element one. But we have also the, uh, an element in the position 22 for K2, which is this, right? So we need to we need to add it up. So that would be K22, now K23. Um, which is this, zero, K32, two, and K33 from the stiffness matrix of the element two. So this is our procedure, right? And what happened with Q? With Q, we have that um, the, band, the, the natural boundary condition, which is Q bar, is only applied or related with the flux of the material, is applied uh, at, the, uh, at the, the last node in the, in, the, in the domain. So Q bar um, look like this looks like this. Now, this is our standard procedure. What I'm doing in Mathematica is, now I'm going to Mathematica. In Mathematica, I have three equations, right? And I'm using the component for the first equation. Um, let me do it this way. I'm using the component for the first equation as the component in this matrix in the position two, two. So this component here is related is K1, Two two times what? Let's call this is I, I call theta. I represent the theta by t, so that would be t two, right? Why? Because t one is zero, so we have the we have um, one two three here. The code numbers one two three here, right? And if we have K, we're solving for theta two, um, one second. Let me see something here. Okay, no, it's okay. Um, I label it T1, T2 and T3. That's how I label. So it means that actually this is T1. This is T1, all right? So I'm showing you, what I'm doing is show you what is my, what is my code uh, to solve for this, for the first equation, equation one. So again, this element here let me let me use another color. This element here in the global stiffness matrix in my code, uh, or this element corresponds to this, right? So the position of that element in K1 it actually is 2, 2, right? K1, 2, 2. That's all. So I'm using the actual position of the elements in the, in, the, in the corresponding stiffness matrices, K1 and K2, to set, to set up my equations and solve for, um, for theta one, theta two, and theta three, which are the coefficients in our shape functions. That's all.
All right, so as I show the first term in the equation number one is the, is the, is, is, is the, is the element in the matrix, in the, in the stiffness matrix K1 in the position two, two. And that it's um, related with T1. Now the second element in, in the same matrix K1, a stiffness matrix K1 has the position two, three and is related with T2. The second equation is the equation with the, with the elements that couple, uh, with the element that, uh, or yeah, with the element that couple the stiffness matrices K1 and K2, the local stiffness matrices K1 and K2. So if you look at the first term, the first term is just related with the stiffness matrix K1 but the second term one of the components is related is, is a component in k1 and the second component is a component in k2 so you can see that the position in the actual k2 um, is the position 1 1 right is you do the product between the the, the, the matrix and the vector t1 t2 and the vector, the vector T, you will see that the corresponding um, uh, element is T2 multiplying this, L, this, this, this term and so on. So we have three equations, we have three unknowns, T1, T2, and T3. All what we need to do is to solve this system of equations. We use the command and solve to do it as um, as you can see in this line. Oh. So the three equations are there. Equation one equal to zero, equation two equal to zero, and equation three is equal to QR because the, the fourth element Q, capital Q, is all zeros except, except the last one, which is associated with the natural boundary condition apply to the last node in our discretization or in our discretized domain. This line here is just a definition of the, of the parameters. The length one, U is the velocity, KR, um, KR which is the, is the constant with the reaction between the material and the surroundings and D, related with the diffus diffusivity and Q bar. Okay, so once we solve this, once we solve, um, we solve this system, this, this system of equations, we, we will have a value for, we will get the value for T1, T2, and T3. We, to, in order to evaluate or to see um, the, the solution, we need to plug back those values to our corresponding shape functions. So you can see that for the element one, we have only two components of the shape functions. The one related with NK, the shape function um, K and the shape function J. So you might ask why you're missing, why, why, I mean, why the shape function related with the node i is, is missing. Well, what happened is that our boundary condition at node i for the quadratic element is at x equals zero. And the boundary condition is essential at that node and is zero. So it means that the contribution of n i is zero. <laughs> In, in our solution, in our approximate solution. So I don't need to, to include it in this, in this, in, 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 in the, in, in the, in this part. All right, so now we can plot, we can plot um, the contribution or the, the, 
the solution uh, for the element one, and we do the same similar for we do the same or similar thing for element two. Different from element one, in element two, you can see that we have the contribution of both shape functions and i and n j because um, because both nodes are active in this element. So again, I define as a P2, the plot related with element two. And I don't remember why I, oh, I know. Okay, now this other, this next two lines is just for the exact solution. It's just to be able to plot this, the exact solution. All right, so um, we have three plots, P1 predated describing the, the variation of the, uh, in the, with the element, with the quadratic element, we have P2 related with the linear element, P3 is the exact solution. And now we want to show all of them in a plot. So you can see that in this figure, blue represents the exact solution and red, the approximate solution by finite element using two elements. The first one is quadratic and the second one is linear. So, I mean, I would say this is not bad, right? I would say this, it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's a good approximation with only two elements. But let's see if we can improve the solution. Let's, instead of considering one quadratic element and one linear element, let's use two quadratic elements. Okay, so in order to get the result for this, um, the result by using two quadratic elements, uh, you can run a similar script in Mathematica, um, but this time you will need to define your second element or yeah, your second element uh, in, in the same way I, I, I defined the first element in the in the example, and you will end it up in the in the in the plot comparing the exact solution versus the final element, the solution from final element with two quadratic elements. So this is the solution with two quadratic elements. So it matches the exact solution. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Remember the, the blue one is the exact solution. So if we go to the solution with quadratic, one quadratic and one linear element, this is the exact. This is the uh, one quadratic element plus one linear element. And if we keep going, um, this solution here is the solution by the approximate method um, with the strong, a, 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 a strong form Galerkian, sorry. Right. Remember, some form of Galerian satisfies both natural and essential boundary conditions. And this solution, the yellow one here, is from the approximate theory, weak form Galerian, where only the essential boundary condition uh, is satisfied. Um, the approximate function only satisfies the, 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 the essential boundary condition. The natural boundary condition is imposed. So in this um, four pictures, you can see 
the comparison uh, from the fourth and actually three methods um, where the two at the bottom are the finite element method applied to the induction diffusion problem. 